you as a coach, to what extent do guys like Pearson and Monaghan, guys who have the resume that you mentioned, get more benefit of the doubt in holding on to their chair when it comes time to decide? Well, I think the biggest thing is, is, is their body of work, okay? And if they've had that big of a body of work, it's because they, they've had consistency, you know? So it's a fine line, and you know what you have with this player, and you know you're gonna, what you're going to get from this player day in, day out. And you have potential player that probably has a higher ceiling, but we're not sure about the consistency of that player right now. So it's a fine line, right? Like how high is the ceiling, right? And like it's, 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 an, it's a juggling act a little bit. There's no doubt about it, you know? And, and, and I know we're going to have some hard decisions to make. And at the end of the day, I think it's a good problem to have hard decisions to make. But to square that with what you were just talking about, where a baby has certain responsibilities, a kid has other ones that they can handle. I mean, where you, where you are as a team, are you not? Does it not benefit where you are as a team to look at the ceiling more than the body of work? Yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a fine line. You're not wrong. You know, it's a fine line. We gotta we gotta figure that part out. We're gonna make decisions that's gonna, you know help the team now, but also not hurt the team for the future. And those are, those are like not easy decisions, but we're going to take everything into consideration. We're going to make the best educated decision we can make, you know? But, uh, uh, you know, when I'm talking about, you know, the infant and the young kid, I'm reflecting as a whole, as a team. I'm not talking about particular individual. Is where we are as a team. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, Kirby Doc and Alex Nuba kind of came here under similar circumstances. Players with big potential. What did you learn from the experience with Kirby, <laughs> enabling him to reach a bit more of his potential that you can apply to getting Alex Newhook off to a good start? Line? I mean, don't overcoach him. You know, I think um, with Docker, I just really build a relationship with him. I wanted him to, to, to trust me and, and so that, you know, when you do have hockey discussions, um, he trusts him, you know? Because I think if, you know, they're young players. They have they have flaws in their game, you know. But I think as coaches, it's easy to try to correct everything right now, you know. And then sometimes it's too much, and they lose the feel for the game. Uh, so for me, it's just taking my time with him, just the way same I did with Docker, let him play. And then, you know, I need to see from my own eyes, uh, uh, these are one-off or this is, this is a trend, you know. And I was cautious in, in, in really going to, to watch tape on him because – I don't have the context or the environment he was playing in, so I want it. And I, I and I, honestly, I, with Docker, I did the same thing. And when I watched him play in camp last year, I was, I was impressed, you know. And obviously, <coughs> he showed what he could do. But uh, to me, like it, all these guys, like the young guys, and you know, you got to build a relationship before you really start diving into hard coaching. Talked a lot about the youth of your team. I think last year was a pretty unique experience and so many of them getting to grow here together in the NHL. How much can the bond that was formed there, and I know you've made a point of saying that the room belongs to them and you don't spend as much time in there, but it's pretty apparent to us and I'm sure it is to you that there is a bond there. How much can that be at the foundation of you guys being a bit of a surprising team this year? Well, I mean, When the guys care for one another, they got to accomplish way more. 
that's just in anything, any sport. Guys have to care for one another, and I think they do. You know, and the success on the ice sometimes starts so far from the ice. You know, and that locker room is it's usually where it starts. Marty, there's so much focus on development of the young players on this team. You're a relatively new NHL coach. How do you think you have most developed yourself personally as a coach so far? What's your biggest challenge going into this season? How have I developed? I mean, I've learned, you know, I've learned the, the, the league a little bit in, in the sense of how teams teams play and, and you know, and, and what beats what, like where's the advantage against a certain team style, um, you know. Not every team plays the same way, so you can't, not that you're changing um, your style based on who you play, but you really talk about where the holes in the other team's structure kind of thing, you know, and I feel that's a part of the game that I really enjoy. Uh, so I would say I develop there. Um, what's my biggest challenge? Um, I think anything as an athlete, as, as, to me, it's, it's, it's cons consistency, you know. I mean, I know I'm committed, you know, and, and it's just staying consistent. Because without consistency, you never finish. Com if you're committed, you'll start whatever you want to start. But without consistency, you'll never finish. So for me, it's just like, I don't know if it's my biggest challenge, but it's a challenge this league because it's 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 hard as a team to stay consistent. I know it starts with me, and it's you know it's staying the course and staying consistent. You know, and it's uh, not every day is the same. There's you know there's there's stuff that you can't control. So through the chaos, I guess my biggest challenge. I know year after year, like there's chaos that happens. And to me, it's to, it's to stay consistent. Before you were hired, Kent and Jeff both spoke about how they wanted a modern day coach. Um, saw the situation with Mike Babcock in Columbus and whatnot. How important is it today to have a modern day coach in the NHL? I don't know. I mean, I can. It's hard for me to comment on. You know what's modern and what's old school. Uh, you know, because you know, Vegas just won the cup. You know, Bruce been around for a long time. Is he old school? Is he modern? I don't know. To me, it's about what's important is you have to evolve as a coach. You have to evolve. You know, it's like you know, if you're going to the dentist. Right? Are you going to the dentist that's got the 30 year old uh, equipment? Are you going to the dentist that's got the, you know what I mean? It's still, you gotta evolve. <laughs> you wanna stay in the business? You have to evolve. <laughs> <laughs>